it's the week after Easter and what has changed? Um, not much. Um, maybe some things have changed for you. Maybe a lot of things have changed. Um, always interesting to me that Easter is so different in Christmas um, in the fact that Christmas after one week after Christmas, things are like a letdown. You've been doing all this decorating and extra eating and extra spending and then finally you're and it's kind of like you get a breather. Not the same with Easter because it's just not as commercialized, well, in some respects, but um, clearly this Easter was different. Um, there were parts of it that I wasn't happy with, the fact that I wasn't in church, but there were some parts that were just good. I love the fact that I get to spend virtually Easter with a lot of my relatives, my brothers, one in Dallas, one in Pittsburgh, my daughter in Chicago, relatives we talked to um, from Arkansas, Houston, California, Vegas. We got to spend time with people that we normally don't spend time with on Easter, and that was good. Didn't go out of my way to make this huge meal because made what we had and dinner was good, and didn't have to rush home tired from service and get things done, and that was good too. But next year we'll be back in church, and I'm looking forward to that. But I'm going to keep that part about staying in touch with my relatives virtually. That was awesome. Um, I've been thinking about how the resurrection changes people's lives, and I thought about the disciples who were completely changed after Jesus was resurrected, particularly in their prayer lives. Um, I think about the time when Jesus was arrested and he took them with him and he's asking them, you know, in the garden, pray with me. And they couldn't even stay awake. He had sent them out before to heal people and they couldn't do it. And there's even a time when they were um, confronted by some people who were doing things just a little differently. And they asked Jesus, should we pray for a fire and brimstone to come down on them? So clearly, they were having some struggles with prayer, just like we do. But after the resurrection, things changed. They prayed while they were in prison. They even sang when they were in prison. They healed people. They led people to Jesus. They even prayed and waited for the Holy Spirit to come upon them to give them more power to pray and to do things in the name of Jesus. So this week, after the resurrection, I would ask that you would think about those things that we could pray for, how our life would be changed. Because even 2,000 years ago, the resurrection still has the same power and the same hope that it had then. So this week, join me in praying for the people on the front lines, the healthcare workers, the people in the nursing homes, the nurses, the doctors, the technicians, the ambulance drivers, all the people who are involved in that. Pray for pastors who are struggling to keep their congregations intact and to just stay on top of things. Pray for those who have lost loved ones. Pray for those who can't be treated for their illnesses because hospitals are packed with people suffering from the virus. Just pray as the Lord leads you. And when you pray, pray for healing, pray for restoration, but rest in the hope that this is not where we're going to stay. Because of the resurrection of Jesus Christ, things will change. They always change for the better when he's involved. Think on the hope of Jesus Christ. Think about how this Easter was different than the rest. And just pray for the hope and the healing and the restoration of Jesus Christ to come. Thank you, and um, we'll meet again. Remember that you can reach out to the church, 703-729-3900, or you can email us at assistance at cfcwired.org if you need help in any area. We're praying for you, and we'll see you soon. God bless.